Hello, I'm Temi Adelaide with Somerville Neighborhood News. Today, I will be speaking with Joe Lynch, SCAT TV producer, longtime resident of Somerville, and Somerville delegate for Massachusetts Democratic Party. It's a pleasure having you here, Joe. How are you? Thank you, you Timmy. Thanks for having me in today. The tables are turned. Oh, yeah, yeah, I Someone's know. Someone's interviewing me. <laughs> How does that feel? That's great. That's great. <laughs> so I feel sorry for you as the interviewer. Oh, no, no, that's okay. I've been looking <laughs> forward to this. So I'm new to Somerville. What can you tell me about the city? Vibrant, alive, always interesting. Um, it's the place where everyone wants to be. Um, and unfortunately, there are some who can't afford to be. So I, that's it in a nutshell. I can tell you hours, but you only have a short time. Um, long time resident, left for a long time, then came back. So I've been here close to 20 years. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I was born in the city. I've seen it go through its ups and downs, and now it's on the upswing again with all the unintended consequences. Right. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> so... I know that you said that it's had its ups and downs. Could you elaborate more as to how that's changed over the decades? Sure. I mean, Somerville, you know, when I was growing up, Timmy, Somerville was a strictly blue collar workers city. Um, you know, during the 70s, 60s, 70s and 80s, we went some really we went through some really rough times economically, socially, you know, all of the things that were hitting the country didn't spare Somerville. So um, unfortunately, we had a moniker that I have made a promise to the mayor that I would never repeat, and it was a nickname for the city. But we did have a lot of crime, uh, including organized crime. Um, books have been written about it. Uh, but you know, I, the generations that came after that have really um, put the pedal to the metal, and we are a shining example of how a former blue cat, blue. Uh, blue-collar city can remake itself and reshape itself and now we are I would say we're the envy of the capital city of Boston that's awesome to hear so I know that there's been changes in economics and in healthcare, social living things like that and with President Trump withdrawing from the um, Paris climate deal and other issues as a delegate who attended the um, Democratic, the Massachusetts Democratic Convention, um, what changes were they talking about there? Um, it appears as though there is an enormous movement here that always has been a very, very vibrant environmental um, society, I would say, here in Massachusetts. Uh, I pride myself in being a progressive. We're a progressive state. We're a blue democratic state. We've always been forward thinking in terms of the issues of the day, and climate change is no different. Um, climate change, the, the platform people, we may want to say what this convention was about. Rather than a nominating convention, where the candidates actually come in and they're looking for delegates to nominate them, um, this is what they call a platform uh, convention, where the delegates who are elected locally all gather together. This year it happened to be at the DCU Center in Worcester. There were over uh, close to 4,000 delegates at the DCU Center. Each of the platforms that are presented to the Democratic Party are vetted for their consideration to the delegates. Um, one of them happened to be on climate change. And it, I, I was glad to see that platform come front and center this year. And I voted for the for the platform uh, that piece of the platform itself, and it was basically that the the states, since the action of the federal government appears to be contra to what we've been fighting for all these years, the states are now going to take that over, and the states are going to create their own really intensive initiatives for um, uh, zero carbon footprint, you know, and working towards that. And Somerville. I would say Somerville had an enormous amount of delegates who were very interested in that. And I give them a lot of kudos because they participated in the committees that vetted these issues that were coming before the delegates. So yeah, I mean, it's front and center in Somerville's mind and it's front and center in Massachusetts' mind. So I was very pleased to see that pass on the platform. Okay, 
So going off of that, have you seen anything that the city of Somerville has been doing to talk about climate change as an issue? Sure. We have, you know, many not-for-profit groups. We have many um, citizen groups that, and they participate in a lot of the statewide groups. But the city of Somerville itself, we do have a forward-thinking mayor. Um, he does have progressive ideas in terms of uh, climate change. He believes in science. Um, as the, Senator Warren said at the convention, I believe in science. So our, our mayor has believed in science for a lot longer than uh, I think uh, our president in Washington. His initiatives with the city are outstanding. You know, he's, he's done everything from you know, revamp the way that we get rid of our, our refuse and our trash to um, upgrading all of our municipal buildings, um, the programs for environmentally safe ways to do things in the city, um, chemical disposal, you know, we have hazardous waste. I mean, all those programs are brand new underneath Joe Cardatoni's leadership over the last, let me try to guess, 12 years over 12 years. So we've been doing it for 12 years. I can't name every single program that right. they've done, but we do have an Office of Environment and Sustainability here in the city that get involved in everything from new building code all the way up to uh, how do we do rain barrel management for the, for the residents of the city. And just looking off of the um, platforms that you were talking about, besides climate change, were there other issues that were addressed? Oh, God, you're putting, the, you're putting me on the spot. I hate <laughs> when the tables are turned. There were an enormous amount of, of amendments to the charter for the Democratic Party. There were enormous amounts of um, platform adoption. Okay. So one of the things that, that passed resoundingly and, and I give a lot of credit to the younger folks who are participating in that convention for the first time. Now, it's always difficult when you do something for the first time, such as interview somebody right. who can talk for a long time. <laughs> uh, um, their platform concentrated on one of the issues that I think is vital to the n next generation of leaders, which is the crushing debt that students have when they leave higher education. They were able to craft an, uh, um, a charter, a plat piece of the platform, to push the democratically elected people in this state for a program that would forgive student debt. Okay. And that passed resoundingly, not just from the younger delegates that were there, average age probably 25, 27, but it all, the support for that also came from the older delegates who had been part of the conventions and part of these platform um, conventions for a long time because they have kids and they have grandkids and they know what that debt is doing to them in terms of starting their careers once they graduate. So I was very pleased to see that. There were some other things, there were some issues at the convention that the younger delegates didn't like because they weren't adopted. Right. And you know if I had anything to say to some of the younger delegates who were there is that you're at a state convention, and that state convention has rules. Right. And you have to abide by the rules, which are created by the party for the purposes of expediency and you know all the rest of the things why you have rules. Um, so one of the things that they talked about, you know, they tried to get uh, past uh, part of the platform to talk about some international affairs right. and foreign affairs. And those are ruled by the chair of the Democratic Party at that convention. Those are ruled not applicable. Right. They're out of order, so to speak. I hate to sound like I know what I'm talking <laughs> about when it comes to Robert's rules of order, but they are not applicable when it comes to a state convention. Right. And so. that would be the, the piece with the um, with Israel and the Palestinians, correct? It, the question that came before the delegates was the support of a resolution to be supported by the Massachusetts Democratic Party right. for there were a lot of details that went along with that but yeah the issue was about um, resolution of peace between Israel and Palestine okay. yep and how about the um, free tuition can you go a little bit into that the details of that um, 
those are not really fleshed out. I mean, I would have to refresh my memory to look at the uh, the paper. You know, we're supposed to be environmentally friendly these days. Right. But the amount of paper at that convention with amendments and people asking for support and, the old, you know, still the political stuff they hand to you. Um, I would have to look at that again to, to get into the details of it. But it is basically a resolution and it's basically a, a vote by the delegates at that convention to push their lawmakers to create the legislation for debt forgiveness. Okay. So it, it's not really done at the convention. Okay. It is saying to the legislators that we elect, this is part of the Democratic platform. You need to push for it and you need okay. to vote for it. Okay. Yeah. So. And aside from climate change, was there any other issues there that stood out to you that you felt really needed to be addressed? There, um, being a veteran, there were a number of different um, issues that had to do with veteran services here in the Commonwealth. Um, we've been spared uh, a, a lot of the, um, I, I, I hate to say it this way, but the embarrassment that other veteran services administrators across the United States, they've incurred that because the funding for veteran services just isn't there in certain parts of the country. Massachusetts happens to have a terrific veteran services, but it was to push for more funding for health care for our veterans. So I was very glad to see that pass. LGBTQ um, issues were on the platform. Those passed. Um, I'm trying to remember. Uh, now you got me. <laughs> now you got me. And looking back at the convention, um, reading through a few articles, I saw that there were times where people, other um, delegates, were not too happy with the way things were going because they said that uh, issues sometimes weren't addressed fully, that people were more focused on up-and-coming up candidates for the governor's position. So could you go into that? Tell me how you feel a little bit about that. You, you know, I have mixed feelings on it, Tammy, because it, the conventions the conventions are only, you only have two big conventions. Right. So you have the platform convention, then you have the nominating convention. Right. Anybody thinking about running for office statewide, We'll always go to these platform conventions and try to get a speaking role. Right. You know, politicians love microphones. <laughs> As show hosts love microphones and right. cameras, so do politicians. If, if I were to give suggestions to the Democratic Party and say, you know, your conventioneers who go to these things, this is a new group of convention goers that are issues oriented. They're not there for the, for the parties that take place beforehand or the breakfasts. Or, they're there because they're passionate. It's not like the old time delegates with the hats and the donkeys. And very, we saw very little of that at this convention. What we did see was a lot of people pushing their issues. So in order to give that amount of time dedicated to the actual platform issues, I think they're going to have to revamp the number of speakers. Now, it's tradition when you are at your party's convention that if your governor is a Democrat, he gets to speak. If he's not going to come, then you, the lieutenant governor comes. Well, in Massachusetts, because we have a Republican governor and a Republican lieutenant governor, they didn't speak for obvious reasons. But then we had, you know, the attorney general. We had two um, United States senators, both Senator Warren and Senator Markey spoke. That's kind of giving it to them as respect. You let your senior senators speak. I'm not quite sure why we had to hear from the auditor, the state auditor. Um, maybe even, I, you know, I like, I like uh, Maura Healy, but I'm not quite sure if we need to hear from the attorney general. So if I were to give my opinion, I would say limit your number of speakers right. because that took up four hours of the convention. Yeah. Another three hours was dedicated to the platform. So I, I guess I agree, but I disagree. There's a nuance in there. You have to let certain elected officials speak, but maybe not all of them. And then also with the climate, I know I'm going to keep using this word climate over and over again, but with the, I guess, social climate going on, issues, um, Trump administration, the way things are being run, a lot of people aren't agreeing with the way he's doing things in the White House. And with that being said, do you think that at the convention that there was a lot of focus on what 
the Trump administration was doing and maybe not focusing too much on what mayor, I'm sorry, what Governor Charlie Baker hasn't been doing. Yeah, I think there were certain speakers at the convention that played it very wisely in that they're playing to a Massachusetts audience of conventioneers who are Democratic, yeah. true blue, a lot of them progressive. I don't think you have to tell us how bad our administration is in Washington. So they didn't. They just didn't. They ignored it and they went after the issues that were on the platform. They spoke directly to what those conventioneers wanted and those delegates wanted. Others took their opportunity to, to say what they wanted to say about the Trump administration. I happen to think when you go to a convention that is a platform convention, stick to the issues of the platform. You can say what you want as a guest speaker, but I think it's kind of wasted. You're preaching to the audience. That was my opinion. And then, <clears throat> so, oh, sorry, excuse me. So Governor Charlie Baker has not announced yet whether he is, you know, going to run next year. Maybe we can get him on this show. Maybe. To that, announce. Ooh, I, I like that. Okay. Stay tuned for that, All guys. Right. But um, he hasn't announced that yet. Do you, after looking at the candidates that um, came up at the convention, do you think that they're, would you select any one of them as saying, yes, this person is a strong candidate against um, Charlie Baker? Now, I'm going to get myself in trouble as a, <laughs> the vice chair of Ward 5 City Committee here in the city and as a delegate to the Democratic Platform Convention. When you have a Republican governor in a Democratic state who has 75% approval rating, that approval is not coming from the Republican Party right. solely here, right. Massachusetts Republicans solely. That's coming from Democrats as well. Mm -hmm. It will be a very, very hard, difficult campaign for any of the three already declared candidates, Democratic candidates, would be very hard road for them to unseat a popular incumbent governor. Absolutely. So that's not saying I agree with everything yeah. Charlie Baker puts across. Absolutely. That is saying that when a poll was done, I just I saw this on uh, WGBH TV. When a poll was done, man on the street it was done by my friend Adam Riley at Greater Boston. L less than ten percent of the respondents could name any one of the three. Yeah. So name recognition is important. Organization is important. But almost equally or more important is the message that they're, they're coming across. If, you are, if your message as a candidate for governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is Charlie Baker bad, I'm good, there's 75 percent of the people in the Commonwealth who don't think Charlie Baker is bad. Absolutely. So my advice to any of the, and I know all three candidates for governor. Um, Jay Gonzalez was on my show. Right. Can I do the plug? Yes, absolutely. Greater Somerville. <laughs> so Jay Gonzalez was on Greater Somerville. Seti Warren, who's the uh, mayor of Newton, he's lined up to come in in August. And so is Bob Massey, who is a native son right here in Somerville. So all three of those candidates are starting early to get, a, get their name recognition. And what better place to do it than right here at Somerville Media absolutely. Center? Absolutely. And what is it like being a delegate? for the Massachusetts Democratic Party. It's fun. It's fun. Don't don't, you know, forget about the other conventions that you see. If you're passionate about politics and you are very interested in the issues of the day, whether it's local or state or federal, conventions can be fun. You don't have to participate in all the other hoo-ha that you see that goes on. What was fascinating for me this year, and this is my third year of being a delegate, what was fascinating for me was the um, num sheer number of young people participating in that convention for the first time. Now, it gets frustrating for them because they're not necessarily, um, they don't understand all of the rules. You know, right. it's not a free forum to air grievances. Right. There are rules and regulations of any convention that you go to that you have to adhere to. Some were frustrated because they felt as though the rules of the convention weren't in their favor. And my advice to two or three of the younger folks who spoke to me was then get more involved in how the committees, the different committees, change those rules right. of the convention. You can't change them at the convention. 
you have to do your homework. You have to do a lot of work beforehand to change those rules. And there is opportunity for that. Um, but from Somerville, man, was I proud of those guys. That's great. So you're seated by Senate District. And our senator happens to be Pat Jalen. Um, so we're all seated in the second Middlesex District. Um, so there were folks from Cambridge, Somerville, Medford, Winchester. We were all together. So, That's great. Yeah. But Somerville, we had the most number of delegates. Oh, yeah. I actually heard it was um, about 1,500 um, young people that showed up there as well. That was full convention. Yeah, full convention. Full convention. Um, these are, somebody asked me the other day, where, where did they come from? And I said, well, obviously, a lot of them were Bernie, Su Bernie Sanders supporters yes. who are not willing to let go yes. of what they want to see this country turn into instead of what it is now being advertised as. Yeah. Um, kudos to them. My advice is you don't give it up just because you didn't get everything that you wanted at this convention. Right. Don't give it up. Stay involved in local politics because, in the famous words of our, one of our former congressmen, Tip O'Neill, all politics is local. It's about networking. It's about getting people on your side. It's about trying not to, and let me say this, trying not to piss off people in the process because once that gets divided, it's very, very, di it takes 30 seconds to get somebody angry at you. It takes a long time for them to come back together and kind of let bygones be bygones. So, you know, I was very cautious at that, at that convention about don't get mad, don't get mad, and don't blame, lead. Don't blame the old timers in the Democratic Party. Lead with what you want to see happen. And how do you become a delegate? You are elected. Okay. Uh, you can be elected or appointed. So the process very quickly is, those people who are um, within the ward committees, so each ward in the city has a certain number of seats, those people who are on that ward committee elect the delegates to go to the conventions. There are other membership style delegates, ex officio, the elected officials from the city, so Mayor Joe, the Board of Aldermen, our state reps, our state senator, those are they just go as, as elected officials. All the rest of us are elected. And lastly, is there any words that you would like to leave to the public? Yeah, get involved. Get involved. It could, maybe it's only a half hour a month, you know, it's something on local politics. Get behind your candidate because you believe in what they say and not because you dislike somebody else. Right. Um, you know, your issues are your issues. And, and if you think other people are really going to do it for you, uh, my, my life experience has always said, you don't get anything without asking for it. Right. So if you're, if you're inclined like I am, which is to try to get the message out there through being a Democrat, being part of the Democratic Party here in the city, being an elected person in my ward, being elected a delegate, that's how you get your voice really heard with everyone else who believes with what you believe. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Joe, for, for being me, on the show. It's great to meet you. Thank you. And thank good you so luck. Much. I, I wanna, thank you. I want to see more of you down here at some of the oh. media center. <laughs> well, we'll see how that goes. Okay. <laughs> thank you guys so much for listening. This is Temi Adelaide with Joe Lynch on Somerville Neighborhood News.